Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Picture Book Chat. I am Mary Ellen Braggs. I am the Public Services Manager for Early Learning. And with me today is Sherry Boggs. And I am responsible for all the programming for children from birth on up to eight years old. So I say I have a really fun job. I love it. And then I'll let Sherry introduce herself. I have the other really fun job in the district. Mm -hmm. um, I'll repeat my name, I'm Sherry Boggs. I am the Youth Collection Development Librarian. So basically I'm a buyer for the district and I buy everything for ages zero up to 18. Um, but what I really love about my job um, are the picture books and getting to see those when they first come in. So this picture book chat is a thing that Mary Ellen and I designed so we can kind of share those conversations with our customers um, and kind of bring them on board with all this enthusiasm we have for all the great picture books that are coming out. Um, so Mel, I'm ready to start. Is there anything else we need to cover? I think we're good to start. Okay, okay so my first book today is 10 on a Twig. Um, and this is a great counting book. I love that the end papers have like these little feathers. And the structure, like the physical structure of the book reminds me of the very hungry caterpillar. Mm -hmm. We've got these little, I don't know if you can see these, but like these little flaps. And so you start with 10 on a twig, just passing time. And you turn the little flap, snap. One falls off and then there are nine. Nine on a twig lined up straight. So you get like a little clue that the next thing might rhyme. Um, so your kids that know how to count can like yell out eight. And you just keep going. Then there are eight, eight on a twig away from their nest. Oh, that's a tricky one. Snap. When another one goes, seven are left. Um, so you see all the birds coming off. This is a great way that you can talk about colors with small kids, like differentiating, you know, like the body color and the wing and tail color. Um, like I said, it's a great way to kind of guess the numbers that are coming next. Uh, it's a great like zero to 10 counting book. Um, and I also just like really the clean design of this. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working with small kids, and you can talk more about this, Mel, but um, you know, like when you're working with toddlers and like early preschool, having kind of a simple uncluttered design helps them focus on whatever's happening in the pictures. Um, mm -hmm. And they're not terribly complicated. So I really like it for that reason too. And this author is Low Cole. I think this might be their first book. I just noticed they've got a second book coming out. Oh, nice. Series. And I think it's this fall. I can't remember the name of it, but it's the same thing. It's kind of a 10 on a something mm -hmm. story, and it looks a lot like this. So that's something to look forward to. Mel, tell me how you use this. Oh, I, I just love this book. I thought the bright colors and the birds, and um, like you said, I think the all the white space really offsets um, all the birds, so they really stand out. Um, I love the counting aspect of it. So I'd use it with like any counting activity. It would be a great one to introduce a math um, unit. It, you, you're working on subtraction as you're taking away, which is always a nice thing. Um, and you can talk about subtraction with them. You could talk about the shapes on the birds. Because um, when you look at the birds, there's lots of different shapes on them. Um, you could also... Um, do an art activity with it and have them create their own birds. But I love the ending. It's a great bedtime story. So it'd be great right before nap time. But I don't know if you notice the end papers. So it's nice and bright at the beginning of the book and at the end when they go to bed, the background changes. I didn't even look at that, that's awesome. So you could even point out the end pages at the beginning of reading this and say, why do you think they're a different color at the you know, from the beginning to the end, what do you think, why do you think that they would do the, do that, the illustrator would do that? So I really like that too. Um, but it's, the ending was really nice as they settle in for the night and- Can we show our, our viewers yes. that? Yes. We'll see who can pull it up first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where they all settle in for the night, good night. So yeah, it's a it's a really fun one to use. Great for toddlers and for preschoolers because there's so much you can do with either one. So I thought this would make a great story time book, great circle time book, great bedtime book. So a good flannel board too. 
I oh, just, it would be a really fun flannel board. Easy to make. Yeah, <laughs> and you can kind of put a little different twist on it and just make the birds a solid color so that you could really work on colors too. So yeah, that would be a fun one to do. Good idea. Write <laughs> that. that one down. <laughs> yes. Um, are you ready for our next book? Yes. Okay, this is Wonder Walkers by Misha Archer. And I love this because it's just very simple. It's just a brother and sister and the sister says Wonder Walk and the brother says, sure. And so they go outside and they look at the various things in nature. Like here, um, one of them is asking, is the sun the world's light bulb? Is fog the river's blanket? So they're looking at nature in these like really awesome kind of metaphorical terms and um, you know, kind of human terms, like thinking of it in terms of like covering or what purpose the different features of the natural world would be. Um, like I like this, the mountains have bones, our forests the mountains fur, our trees the sky's legs. Um, so the book just kind of continues like that, like it doesn't have, you know, like a clear narrative arc, no. um, but it's just about experiencing nature and, you know, thinking about nature in a new way and it's a great like imaginative activity, I would think, mm -hmm. like if you actually took this outside and wondered these things. And the construction of the book I really like because it's tissue paper, much like <laughs> we're back to Eric Carl again. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the technique that he had, you know, with layering yeah. tissue paper. And then I was reading um, that she made handmade stamps. So like some of these places where you see like a little pattern, that's probably a stamp that she made. And then she was dipping it in ink and putting it on top of the tissue paper. So um, this is pretty sophisticated for that technique. And so I'm really kind of enjoying it for that, like just looking mm -hmm. at the artistry and the illustrations. Um, yeah, yeah heard... I'm going on and on. Mel, what do you think of this one? <laughs> no, I thought the same thing. I love the illustrations. I think they're beautiful. And yeah, she was using the oil paints and the collage on paper and the handmade stamps and layered tissue paper, which made me think you could kind of put out those types of mediums for the kids to experiment with and make a picture um, to see what they can come up with. So it'd be great for just even creating some artwork. I thought it would be great for um, a nature walk if you were going to do a nature walk and talk about, well, what do you wonder when you're outside? What are this, some of the things that you wonder about? And I really like that, the, the wonderings. Well, I wonder, which is something you hear a lot in meetings with adults now too, as you're discussing, they say, well, I'm wondering, you know, what would happen if we did this instead? So I like that. Um, you could also have the kids investigate and research one of the questions so that you could, you know, spread it out over a couple of months even and go back to the book. So there's some great things in there. And yeah, just getting them to kind of question as well as observe when they're outside with nature. I thought I like that aspect of the book a lot. And that they were really enjoying themselves when they're outside too. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that they're sitting and observing a lot of times or they're sitting and exploring. Of course, I like the beach picture here. So, um, but yes, so in the vocabulary in here is great. Uh, the shells, the shores, necklace. Is the ocean the world's bath? Are the river, the earth's vein? So there's some different vocabulary in here that I think would be great to introduce to kids too. Yeah. What age would you use this with? I think I would use it with older preschoolers and early elementary even. Yeah. I. Yeah, it's deceptive that way because it's yeah. so simple, but when you look at the vocabulary mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the ability to look at something and compare it to something else, that's mm -hmm. like a higher level skill. So yeah. I think that, Yeah, especially it would be good for that early elementary age too, because then you could really investigate and you could ask them, well, what do you think they're asking there? What do you think the answer is? And then you could follow up on that. So, yeah, I thought that was, it was, it was. Um, a unique um, I'm doing a nature book so I really like that awesome 
Well, speaking yeah. of nature, I've yeah. been sitting for you, Mel. <laughs> uh, I love, I just love, I love this one. <laughs> like, I feel like when I'm talking about this, I'm going to sound like Stefan on Saturday Night Live. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to like, this has everything. <laughs> yeah. It's got this and that. Mm -hmm. um, but it really does. Like, it's got great, like, child accessible illustrations. It's illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins, who's done, um, she's done a lot of picture books that mm -hmm. I really like. And I like, she's got this great kind of childlike style. Yeah. Um, you know, and then she'll, she'll do big pictures, but then kind of focus on little things like just this little earthworm. Mm -hmm. So right away, I had high hopes for this book, but I love the story too. It's about a little girl who takes it upon herself to be the rescuer of tiny creatures. And they need her because sometimes a bug can't turn itself over. Sometimes mm -hmm a worm <laughs> mistake, the amount of time it's going to take to get across the sidewalk before the sun comes out. Um, you know, so like she's noticing these things about these tiny animals and she figures out what they, what they need. And she's not grossed out by mm -hmm. bugs. Yeah. Like They're her love. Um, she talks about how her little brother and the cat <laughs> help her out. <laughs> um, but at school, it's not quite the same thing. Like people don't necessarily like bugs as much as as she does. Um, and there comes this day where they see all these tiny little newborn spiders up in the corner. And of course, like a bunch of the kids are like huddling around the teacher. Um, and she's like, no, this is cool. I've got this. Like, this is what I <laughs> do. And so she knows another little girl in the class can make origami boxes. And so she's mm -hmm. like, you <laughs> make the little boxes. The rest of you line up. We're going to take these little spiders outside. Um, so here they are like lining up to take them outside in their little paper boxes. And then she says she could tell them why they're taking them outside and lining them up so they can climb up, um, but that they wouldn't believe her. And they all stare at her as if she's a spider. Like, I love this perspective of, you know, being kind of close up and everybody looking at you because you know something, <laughs> you know, that they don't know. And it's, it's, I love how they all respond to it though, because like when she tells them why, they are all super excited and like, that's amazing. How did you know that? And the reason why is when you let them out of the little boxes, they climb, they want to climb up. And the reason why is when they get to the top of the surface, the wind catches them and like the little bits of silk mm -hmm. they're putting out and carries them far away so they can start new homes. So I did not know that. Yeah, no, I <laughs> um, learned a lot. <laughs> I did too, yeah. And I I just, like, I love the imagery of that. And I love the way the kids think that's really cool. And, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly she's got this interest that everybody's into because they've just had this incident happen in the classroom where they all learn something. And at the end, there's information about bugs. There's instructions for how to make a little origami box for mm -hmm. the different creatures you want to rescue. Um, I just love it. It's got social emotional learning mm -hmm. aspects, you know, um, the ability to be empathetic for, for another little creature, I think is amazing. I, yes. I love that part of it. Um, I love the scientific approach, the way that she notices different things about the tiny creatures and, mm -hmm. you know, how they move and what they need and what they eat. And I just love that, you know, even before you see the page with the microscope, like you see her studying them and, mm -hmm. you know, the way the illustrator kind of picks those things out to show us too. Right. Um, I can't say enough good about this book. I just really love it. So Mel, <laughs> tell me well, what you liked about this. I'm on the same vein. I really did love it. I thought it would be a great preschool and early elementary age story. I love that it's a little girl that loves bugs. And I just thought girls and science for the win here. So <laughs> yeah. this is a really good one. I really like that page with the microscope um, and how she talked about it being too late for some bugs, but yeah. she was able to still see the beauty of the bugs through the microscope and just appreciate the bug for being a bug, um, which, you know, isn't common for anyone, really. I mean, you know, for not that many people, I shouldn't say for anyone, but for not that many people. I really love the um, classroom spider scene. Um, there. Um, I think the teamwork that it developed and that she had a leadership role all of a sudden and she gets to share her knowledge. So she impressed her fellow students there and, and she finds a friend that shares her interests 
And I loved that part of it too, that suddenly there was somebody there to help her out. So um, I thought they did a really nice job with it. I love the back pages with the information on the types of the bugs that they talked about in the story. And I love that they gave the instructions for an origami box. So, you know, what a great activity for that early elementary age. They can make their own bug catcher. Um, and I think it could be a great introduction to even finding out who in the classroom has the same interests as you do, mm -hmm. you know, because here she is, she found that out by accident. So I thought that was really fun. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we do have a STEM Explorer kit that has a bug catcher in it too. If you don't want to make your own, you can check out the STEM Explorer kit on bugs. Um, so, um, yeah, I thought she did a really nice job on it. And like you said, the social emotional aspect of having empathetic for a different type of creature was, um, was really nice to see too. Um, so yeah, I could see, yeah, a lot of different ways to use this book. I mean, you can introduce, it's a great introduction to an insect unit. Mm -hmm. Because you can talk about how some people are going to like the bugs and some are not going to like the bugs. Right. Um, and talk about why is that? You know, why is that? Is it because you know bees can sting or is it because you're afraid mm -hmm. of what they can do? You know, like have you yeah. ever been bitten by a spider? Yeah. Yeah. And lots of people have a spider phobia. So, <laughs> I mean, that's a, um, that's a great one to have, mm -hmm. you know, have it be a focal point and just how they how she just kind of matter-of-factly deals with it and gets everybody involved and wow. just that problem solving oh I wish I had more hands and she's like oh wait I do have more hands so I yeah the problem solving aspect in the book too is fun too so she packed a lot in this book yeah. And, um, or he did, Curtis. He did. No, I, I gave all the credit to the illustrator, but it's yeah. is written by Curtis Manley, who's a Washington State author. And yes. he's also done a lot of books that I really love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, he packed a lot in the storyline, which I, and, and he did a really good job at it too, I thought. So, yeah, I could see where this could be a, a big one for a lot of teachers to want to have in their classroom collections or you know just use it once a year or with an insect unit i know they used to do bees all the time in kindergarten i think they're doing bees now in kindergarten mm -hmm. used to be when my kids were little it was something else that they focused on but um a different type of insect so so yeah yeah good one the rescuer <laughs> of tiny creatures and it's time for our regular PSA about, you know, if you're a teacher and this book looks interesting mm -hmm. to you, <laughs> buy it sooner rather than later, because what we're finding with picture books is they can go out of print so fast, like sometimes just within a couple of years, or, you know, sometimes if they need to go to another printing, I've been noticing that, you know, with COVID and the paper shortage, mm -hmm. it's taking a lot longer to get back orders back in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so yeah, if you see something you like when we're talking about it, you know, go to Auntie's website, go to the, the Wishing Tree website, check it out from here first if you want to see what it looks yeah. like, you know, but get your hands on it as soon as you can. Um, yeah, that's, so that's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing about, you know, you can check it out from the light from your local library first, you know, see if you really like it. If you do really like it and think you would use it a lot, then, you know, I would purchase a copy. I know teachers don't have huge book budgets. Um, that's true. But books do go out of print and the library doesn't hold on to them forever because eventually they wear out. Yeah. And yeah. And then we can't even get more. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so go away. Yes. So yeah. sad. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, it's time for our last book, Mary Ellen. I know. And this one, <laughs> this one is quite the book. Yeah. Um, oh. Speaking of keepers. Okay. Yeah. So this is Dear Librarian. And Mel, you already know about this one, but I, for our viewers, I'm gonna start by saying this started out as a segment on National Public, National Public Radio's This American Life. Mm -hmm. And it was about a woman who experienced homelessness as a child and how 
a librarian was able to make a difference in her life. So this is kind of a fictionalized picture book account of that. And the narrator of this book um, moves from Colorado to Iowa when she's five years old. And even though they're living with family, like at first they live with the grandparents and then an aunt and then cousins, like nothing ever really feels like home. You know, like you're in somebody else's established household. And so like at the aunt's house, like there's, you know, a pink bathtub with bubble bath, but there's also pretty things all around that you can't touch because yeah. they're not yours, you know, or in the cousin's house, there's no room for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody's all kind of piled up in the basement on this couch, but you know, you're kind of all together all the time. Um, so her life changes the day the mom takes them to the library. And I forgot to mention there's six older sisters and, or five older sisters and one baby brother. Yeah. So it's a passel of kids, but and they all go to the library one day. And for the little girl, it's life changing. You know, it's quiet there, it's peaceful, there's room, there's, you know, thousands of books to look at, there's puppets. Um, so it's already a wonderful place, but her favorite thing about it is the librarian. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is, is just to have an adult that's listening to her and you know, answering her questions like they're as important as an adult's questions. Like you can tell, oh gosh, that it's a rare thing for her to have yeah. that experience, you know, and to have story time where somebody's reading a story to a group of kids. Um, so it just like, <laughs> this is gonna be hard because like I can feel myself starting to choke up a little mm -hmm. bit. But, you know, like sometimes you can wonder if the work that you do really matters. And like this book, affirms that it really does you know mm -hmm. like you might not even be aware of the you know the kids you're impacting as a teacher or a librarian or anybody that works with, with mm -hmm. kids. Um, but the author of this was inspired by her childhood library to become a librarian herself yes. and so and that was what the um this american life segment was all about was about her reuniting with this woman that had meant so much to her as a child um, and I haven't gone to hear it yet, but I'm going to after mm -hmm. reading this book because it just sounds phenomenal. Yeah. So, Mary Ellen. I know. It really this. just tugged at my heartstrings. I don't know. I just loved everything about it. I love the um, letters at the beginning of the book and at the end of the book that um, the host from This American Life wrote. Um, and at the end, there's the letter from Lydia herself. Um, and, you know, she talks about how it was based off of what really happened to her parents, her siblings, when she was a little girl. And it, um, and there's pictures of her at the back and picture of her with the librarian at the back. I mean, it really, it was a book that talked about homelessness, but also gave hope, I thought. Yeah. And, um, so I think that was that was a nice thing to hear. And I would imagine, you know, we want to give kids hope and that we know there are kids out there who are couch surfing with different family members. And, you know, maybe it won't be a reality for them, but just knowing that they could meet somebody who's become special in their life, I think would have some value. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we do hear about that from different authors and different people who we meet who are speaking at our librarian conference who talk about the difference the library made and the fact that we're open to the public, we're open, everyone is welcome in our building. So I thought that was just a great message that she found some, you know, refuge there and something for us to remember as librarians, when we're working with our kiddos, our families, you know, we don't know what may be going on in their life. And so to have that respect there all the time is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the illustrator did a really nice job on the illustrations too. Mm -hmm. um, I love the end papers um, of the on the front, they show like the old library card that used to be there. Yeah. Um, the back with the pictures and the letter. I thought that was um, really good. I thought that this would be a good one for introducing um, the topic about people who are experiencing homelessness um, to, to a group of children, just so that they may not even know 
that you know you're really that somebody in their classroom is homeless um it doesn't have a home um and that i really like that they were able to talk about finding a spot where you feel safe and special too and i think for kids that are experiencing homelessness they don't necessarily have that um so but this was just just the fact that it had to do with the library and that the library made such a big impact on her life that she became a librarian. Just, it was just like one of those little things that just kind of goes, oh, you know, I was reading it the other day and luckily I was home alone as I'm crying as I'm reading it. Um, so yeah, I thought Lydia did a great job with this and I can't wait to hear, hear the radio show also. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've seen similar books that are kind of a an homage to librarians, mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is one of the best ones I've seen. Like some of them can be kind of saccharine or, mm -hmm. you know, but I just think like the lived experience of, you know, of having homelessness and then finding refuge in the library. Like, I feel like this gives this like a level of um, reality that's really, really important, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think of, I mean, my upbringing was that I was, my dad was in the military, so we were always moving a lot. And in between um, his stations, a lot of times, like, we were in our trailer for a month before our house became available. Um, and so, or we're in somebody's apartment, or we lived for a year with my grandparents while my dad was in Vietnam. So, I mean, there's all sorts of things like that that are happening to kids. So really, you don't have their own house, but they're in a house with somebody else. And I think that this book did a good job of depicting that. Yeah. Too. And, um, and they talk, I think she, she even talks about and hear about her, um, her, you know, their her dad had lost his job or and that, you know, they were um that, you know, he was looking for a new job. Mm -hmm. And so um yeah, my dad needed a new job and we needed a new place to live. And you know, that happens more often than we think it happens. Yeah. Right. So um, but they went somewhere where they had family and they were in you know, this is one of those happy stories. Yeah. In that. And I think that's something for us to consider too. That, yeah. you know, we might want to balance it out a little bit with um, keeping in mind if you're reading it to a classroom that you may have somebody who hasn't had a good experience like yeah. she has. Yeah, and, like all the family members are, are welcoming, you know. Yes are some drawbacks that the little girl experiences but like the mom points out like we're really lucky that you know mm -hmm. we have family that love us and yeah open their doors to us mm -hmm. and yeah like you're saying like not everybody has that right Would you and they did move around to different family members too so they all what yeah. was it six kids and two adults all eight of them were you know yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that would be overwhelming so yeah, see. but I thought they did a lovely job with this book. So, uh, are you thinking early elementary for this? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a too. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good one. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, right at that beginning of school too, because you might not, you know, the kiddos don't know each other necessarily, or it might be there might be a couple of new students in a classroom. So, I think it you know, you can talk about, you know, just we don't always know what's happening in each other's lives. And so we don't know when this might actually, when homelessness might be actually be happening for our friends. Um, and just the support that was there, I think was nice to see too. Yeah. And I know not everybody has that support. So, um, but they did a really nice job with that. Yeah, I I was really impressed with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see at the end of the year 
you know, if it gets any awards. <laughs> yeah. The award mm -hmm. season. <laughs> yeah. That was really yeah. good. Well, that's our books for today, Mary Yes, Alice. <laughs> you picked out some good ones. I, as I was reading through them, I was like, oh, yes. Just, I really loved all of them. I did so, too. Nice collection of books. So, well, thank you for joining us today. And um, don't forget, you can always put these books on hold and pick them up at the library. So, um, yes, thank you, Sherry. It's always fun. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> this is a great opportunity to, you know, share the love with about picture books. Yes. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you all for watching today, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Bye.